good evening and all praises be to God who has richly blessed us with 30 years of preaching. That's right, 30 years of preaching. Uh, Y'all look, this is truly a momentous uh, milestone considering the fact that uh, 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 that what I have, I truly, y'all, don't deserve it. But God has entrusted me with the gospel of Jesus, who is the Christ. Uh, 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 30 years, y'all, of joy and pain, laughter and labor, ups and downs. But I can truly testify, God has been good to me. I have met so many people in my 30 years, so many great friendships, so many great fellowships. I, and I want to take the time out to say thank you to all of those, uh, 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 all of you who have supported me uh, through my 30 years of preaching. Not only am I grateful to God, but I'm grateful for you. Your support has been my motivation for me to stay in the race. So guess what y'all, tonight we wanna reflect over my 30 years. We were here with some of my friends uh, and some of my family near and far. And I'm just excited for 30 years of preaching again to God be the glory for all the wonderful things he has done. Hey, y'all, let's get started. Hey, stay tuned. My, my brothers and sisters, if we are honest with ourselves, we have all been in some mess. I, I thought you would shout right there because all of us been in some mess. Uh, we've been in some mishaps and some mayhem, but we also seen the master come to our rescue as well. I, I mean, our times of trouble make us reflect over who deliver us from our trouble. I mean, if we're honest with ourselves, uh, uh, could nobody uh, get us out but God? Uh, could nobody deliver? Could nobody rescue? Could nobody uh, uh, make a way but God? Could nobody see us through but God? Could nobody make enemies leave us alone? Could nobody direct paths but God? And I don't know what you have been through but God. Yes, yes, can I testify for the last 30 years of preaching, I had a lot of but God moments. And if you are honest with yourself, there have been some times when you, don't know, you didn't know which way to turn, which way to go, but God. I'm talking about sickness in your body, but God. And for the last 30 years of preaching, God has been good to me. And that's really been my testimony. I, I could have been in places that I know God didn't want me to be, but God. Uh, 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 here's pretty much the text on this morning. King David is taking a, a flashback of his life and everything he has encountered. And he gave all the glory and honor to God. This is a psalm of David, the servant of the Lord who spoke upon the Lord the words of this song in the day that the Lord delivered him from the hand of all his enemies and from the hand of Saul. Uh, uh, one thing I have discovered is this, my brothers and sisters, when God molds and reshapes a vessel pleasing in his sight, everyone is not pleased with what God has molded and reshaped us into. Let, let me do it again because there's some folks hating on you. You don't even know it. Because God has molded you and reshaped you into a vessel that is pleasing and his sight. And it looks like we got it going on. And folks looking at us and say, look at them how they act. But it's God, y'all. Because everyone is not going to be pleased how God molds you and reshaped you. And this is why I've discovered our anointing causes others to get angry and their anger turn into animosity. Are y'all in here? Now, now watch this. Then their animosity turns into ambush. God has anointed us for service on our jobs and in our churches and even our homes. But we have to be careful because there are some folks who want our position and our possessions. 
I'm preaching better than you saying amen already. I'm all, are you giving me two hours now? Yes, we got some job haters. They will hate you on the job just because they think they can do it better. Can, can I bring it in at 639 Saturday night? I'm just saying we in church. I ain't saying it's none of y'all. But there are some church haters. They will hate on us at church because they think they can do it better. Yes, there are some home haters. There are some folks who just want what you got. David, y'all, David, y'all, David expresses in this psalm a, a song of victory. This psalm was originally a song that was written to glorify the Lord and to honor him for delivering David from King Saul. Here's what we got to see. During the time David was running from Saul, he was in constant danger of death. Now he has been delivered from his enemies and he lifts up his voice and prays to God who has given him the victory. And that's where we ought to shout right there because God has given us the victory through his son, Jesus Christ. And all David was doing in the text is declaring the worth of God. Psalms remind us of who he is and what he has done and can do for us. In other words, here's the reality, y'all. Uh, 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 some of us have been complaining about our financial situation in 2023, but you had the same kind of financial situation perhaps in 1993. And if he got you out in 1993 and it's 2023, he can do it. I have to take a faith flashback over my life. I've been sick before and the time I got sick the last time, I had to reflect on the fact that God healed me then. <laughs> that he will do it now. Hey y'all, we are on the grounds of the St. John Missionary Baptist Church in Lobdell, Mississippi. Hey, this is where I got my start from uh, under the leadership of the late Reverend W.M. Tucker. What a wonderful man of God. Even though this is the new building, uh, uh, I, I actually was in the old building. You really can't see the old building because it's been torn down, but, but you do see the cemetery. This is where I got my start. Uh, it's been a blessing. This 30 years have been a blessing to my life. Hey, what we're about to do now is we're about to go and just listen to some of the people who impacted my life over the last 30 years, some of my preaching buddies. Uh, let's hear their words of encouragement uh, for me. Stay tuned. Hey, Pastor Ryan, what's up, man? This is your boy, Myron Holmes, man. Hey, look, I just want to say congratulations to you, my brother, for 30 years of ministry. Uh, of preaching and teaching, counseling, man, doing weddings, funerals, uh, whatever else, man, that comes along with the job, man, even the late night visits or what have you, late night phone calls, man, uh, no one deserves to be celebrated uh, no other than you, my brother. Uh, man, you're a great uh, preacher, uh, one of God's greatest gifts, man, here in the Mississippi Delta. Uh, glad to be affiliated with you, man. Thank you for letting me glean from you, man. And I uh, pray, man, and hope that uh, during the celebration, man, that uh, you are celebrated well. Um, man, keep up the good work. Stay in the race. Keep a steady pace. Uh, keep your eyes on Jesus, man. And as the song says, you will do just fine. Love you, my brother. Peace out. To God be the glory for all of the wonderful things that he has done. To my brother in Christ, my friend, I just want to say happy 30th preaching anniversary. You know, God have a way of putting people together and allow people to meet each other. I can remember uh, when Pastor Wright got to New Jerusalem Missionary Baptist Church, my home upbringing church uh i want to say that i never met him before but he always did one thing he always made sure uh from the first time that i met him he kept showing himself friendly and a friend is hard to find but i want to say that it was nothing but god that actually allowed us to bond together and allow us to continue to be a blessing to each other 
because this is actually the man, one other man that I can say that has opened up his pulpit for me to come share the word of God to his flock and to God's children. And I want to say thank you because you didn't have to do it, but you did it. And I want to continue to say how much I really do appreciate you. Uh, Pastor Wright, we know definitely that you have actually went through some trials and tribulation in those 30 years of ministry. Because dealing with us folks, I'm talking about black folks, uh, <laughs> they uh, are something special to deal with. They are, they are. But God saw fit to actually allow you to continue to be on this earth to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. And I want to say your teaching is one of a kind. I know definitely that people might say that, yes, when he goes to other churches, he actually uh, preach a whole lot better than he do when he's at New Jerusalem. But I know that me and Pastor Rice share things together. One thing we always say, and we talk about just say, hey, people will say things like that, but it's not the man, Some, you have to look at yourself because shouldn't nobody have to remote control you, you know, press this button and that button and this button and that button to just allow you to come in the house of God to praise and magnify and glorify his name because you ought to bring something to the church. So like they said, let's have a little church praising God. So what did you bring? What do you bring? Do you bring joy? Uh, do you bring a worship or praise up on high? So make sure that you don't have to be punch and prime and punch and prime for somebody to actually dig a praise out of you. Because I heard the songwriter say, I praise him in the morning and I praise him all day long. So we don't want no Ross crown out for you. So to my friend, I'm glad that you did not let any rocks cry out for you. Because if you had, you wouldn't be here right now preaching the way that you have been ministering uh, unto your people. A friend that I can call on, no matter what time of day or night it is, will actually talk to me and actually tell me when i'm wrong we joke at times they say uh, your pastor does have uh, some type of hermit in him and he is one of a kind <laughs> i must say <laughs> so to timothy l Wright, keep preaching the word of god and i want to say thank you for the friendship and the bond that we have with each other we text we talk about football we talk about everything and i can say that much when I'm wrong, he tell me I'm wrong. When I'm right, he'll let me know when I'm right. And that's the type of friend that you want to have. Somebody that'll actually be honest with you and not somebody that will backstab you. And to Pastor Wright, may the Lord bless you to keep on preaching in season and out of season. And as you preach and declare God's word, word, understand one thing, much power, much prayer. Little power, little prayer. No power, no prayer. But you are a praying man. I know that for a fact you are. And God have blessed you to reach his people in so many ways. And I'm asking you to continue to go on home. Though the road may get rough because it's definitely not easy. And the going may get tough. But understand one thing to my dear friend, that you have a leaning post that you can always depend on. It's called goodness and mercy. So when things not going right, make sure you turn to your left and thank God for goodness. 
when things get heavy on you. Make sure you turn to your right and thank God for mercy. And understand that weeping may endure for a night, but joy come in the morning. And as a pastor, I do know that you have had to cry sometimes. And you have to have to lay awake at night. But understand that Jesus will fix it. God bless you. God keep you. And keep on preaching and declaring, declaring God's word. I love you, my brother. And ain't nothing you can do about it. But understand one thing. JSU rocks the house. Reverend Timothy Wright, man, what's up, brother? How you doing? Pastor Cordell Fields here from Pine Grove, Jackson, Mississippi. Just want to encourage you and congratulate you on 30 years of preaching, man. Hey, congratulations, and may God continue to bless your ministry as you have blessed the world. Man, hey, listen, I just want to encourage you and tell you to keep going. Don't stop. Keep doing it instant in season and out of season. That means you K roast and other K roast. That means in opportune times and inopportune times. You preach the word, man. Keep going, keep growing, and keep blowing people's mind with the word of God. May God bless you. May God keep you. Man, 30 years is a milestone. Keep going, brother. God bless you, man. From Pastor Fields in Pine Grove in Jackson. Peace. Hey, you are on the grounds of the Pleasant Grove Missionary Baptist Church or what used to be the Pleasant Grove Missionary Baptist Church uh, in Mound City outside of Pace, Mississippi. This is the first church I pastored. Look, there were four generations of one family. They were the Lawsons and look, they were great people. Uh, Lira Lawson, Lily Lawson, uh, we called him Buster, uh, but great man. Uh, we uh, had so many great experiences at this place to prepare us for something else. Hey y'all, I am grateful for my ministry and what God, the places God has uh, put me in. Look, let's get ready to go back and listen to some of my friends. Hey y'all, I'm enjoying this. Hey y'all, stay tuned. Congratulations, Pastor Wright. 30 years in the preaching ministry. God has been good. It will continue to be good to you for many years to come. I appreciate uh, the mentorship over the years. I appreciate the fellowship and the friendship. Uh, Brother Tim, uh, you've been an inspiration to me as a preacher, uh, as a family man, and just somebody who just keeps it real, my brother. Thank you so much. From the bottom of my heart, from Phoenix, Arizona, man, I love you. I take care. Congrats again on 30 years in preaching. Enjoy your celebration. Stay in the race, my brother. Hey, this is Pastor Anwar Carter. And let me just say, first of all, thank you, New Jerusalem, for allowing me to participate with you in your endeavor to honor your pastor for 30 years of service. I think you are to be commended for such a thoughtful uh, endeavor uh, to celebrate this milestone in his life. And again, I appreciate you for allowing me to participate with you in this. Tim, man, I just want to encourage you to keep doing what you're doing, to stay on the battlefield for the Lord. Uh, you are a gift to the kingdom. You are a gift to me personally. Uh, and uh, if you just stay with God, he's going to continue to lift you to higher heights uh, for our good and for his glory. Thank you, man. I love you. And just keep staying on the wall, preaching the gospel, doing what you do. Godspeed. Praise the Lord, everybody. Listen, I'm Pastor Edward Thomas, Senior Pastor of Greater Northside Missionary Baptist Church here in West Jackson, Mississippi. I wanted to just take this opportunity to congratulate and to celebrate with my friend and my brother, Reverend Timothy Wright, on 30 years of preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. Uh, in some respects, 30 years sounds like a long time. In others, it sounds like a very short time. 
But however it is to you, Tim, today, man, congratulations on being able to be a stalwart for 30 years, three decades. God has graced you and blessed you to preach his gospel and carry the good news of Jesus Christ. And I pray God's blessings upon you to give you strength to do it even another 30 years and beyond as God sees fit to give you grace and strength. God bless you. God keep you. And we'll talk real soon. Love you, man. Hey, we are on the grounds of St. Peter Rock Missionary Baptist Church in Priscilla, Mississippi. How grateful we are for this church. I pastor this church uh, uh, 10 years. Uh, this church has truly been a blessing to me. Um, so many friendships I still have with this church and uh, so many funerals I've done at this church. In fact, the cemetery um, is is over to uh all right, and look, it's just been a blessing at this church uh, from the likes of Thelma Holmes to the Davenports uh, to the Mosby's to the uh, Williams. Man, it's, it's just been a blessing to be at this church. And look, let's go back into our program that we, we hear a few sermons, not the whole thing, but uh, just a little nibbit of some of the sermons I've done over the years. Hey, y'all, stay tuned. But God is our shield. David calls the Lord uh, a buckler. This simply means a seal. Uh, when, when, when trouble comes into your life and mine, and it has. Uh, let me do that again because I thought some folks would shout right there. When trouble comes into your life and mine, and it has. Sometimes the Lord will allow those things to come. And he will give grace. Sometimes, however, there are times when the Lord steps between his children and their trials and acts as a shield to stand between his child and the storm that is coming. Let me help somebody out. There's been some times that God allowed us to go through some stuff. Uh, uh, and I, I shared this before. God does not put us in, in a storm that we might drown, but God puts us in a storm that he will cleanse us. But every now and then, there are storms in our life, and we're trying to figure out how we sleep at night. We're trying to figure out how I'm still functional. Can I tell you why? God has come between the storm and you and give you peace. And he will shout to us, peace. Woo! Be still. Is there anybody else in the house know that God could come between what you got going on uh, uh, that was bothering you and put it somewhere that it don't bother you no more that you can still praise his name? That's why the psalmist says that he's worthy to be praised. Not only that, but God is our security. I really like this because the Lord is called a horn of salvation. The horn is the symbol of strength and conquest. When David calls God the horn of salvation, he is saying that the Lord is the strength of salvation and that in his salvation, he is absolutely, uh, he has absolute security. All right, let me help somebody out. What, what David is really saying is that I'm safe in his arms. <laughs> let, let, let me help somebody out. Uh, uh, I, I'm, 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 I know what's going on around me, but I know who's holding me. I, I know what I've been through, but I know who brought me out. I know what I had, but I know what he can get me. I mean, he's been, we have been safe in his arms of the last three years, my brothers and sisters. Have not you been safe in his arms? Regardless of what you had or didn't have, you were safe in his arms. And we are the testimony, testimony of this 13th day of August 20 and 23 that we're safe in his arms. Antioch Missionary Baptist Church, 230 Shaw Skeen Road in Shaw, Mississippi. Look, I pastor there 
a year and a half. Even though my tenure was not long, I developed some great relationships and friendships uh, through this ministry. Look, y'all, I got to be honest with you. God has truly been good to me. Uh, one particular person that I can't dare not to mention is the likes of Reverend Lonnie Guns, who was a great inspiration to me uh, before I uh, came to Shaw. Uh, he allowed me to preach in his pulpit so many times. Matter of fact, Antioch is the third church I pastored. Great memories, y'all. Great memories, fond memories. And I'm just grateful for the places that God has placed me in. Again, I say this on good authority. God has been so good to me. Hey, y'all, let's go and listen to some of the sermon I did uh, a couple of weeks ago. Uh, uh, look, this has been a blessing, y'all. Hey, y'all, stay tuned. Here is what I'm trying to get us to see. David knew, I feel it natural, that if God could do it yesterday, then he could be counted on to do it tomorrow. And I don't know about you, but yesterday has already forgotten about me. And I'm looking for what's going on right now. Yesterday is history. Tomorrow is a mystery. But today is a gift. And I don't know about you, but I'm going to celebrate the fact that I'm still alive. 30 years of preaching. I'm still alive. 30 years of preaching. I'm still going strong. 30 years of preaching. I'm still trusting the Lord. 30 years of preaching. I still have confidence in the Lord. 30 years of preaching. I put all I have in the Lord. Don't that sound like an incredible God? So, David teaches us that God is worthy of our delight. David teaches us that God is worthy of our dependency. David teaches us that God is worthy of our devotion. That's why it's good for us to make a pledge to the Lord. Somebody say, well, what is the pledge? We ought to pledge to worship him. We ought to pledge to praise and honor his holy name. We ought to pledge to praise him and we should pledge to walk by faith. And when we pledge, God will do something on his end. When we pledge to God, God will refresh us. When we pledge to God, God will help us. When we pledge to God, God will provide for us. When we pledge to God, God will protect us. And there ought to be a few folks in the house says, yes, God, been my protector. I've been through some mess. I've been through some mayhem. I've been through some mishaps. But God has protected me. I, I'm, I'm out of here, y'all. Can I leave with this story? The year was 2001. Uh, the month was September. The date was the 11th. That's when uh, the planes went into the Trade Center. And there was a woman working at the Trade Center getting dressed to go to work. And while she was getting ready to go to work, here comes the chauffeur pulling up to her apartment. She gets in the car going down uh, to the World Trade Center. And the driver looked in the window and noticed that the lady nose was bleeding and the white blouse she had on uh, was dripped in blood. And she was running late for her meeting. And the driver says, uh, do you want me to turn around so you can go change? 
She said, well, no, I'm late for the meeting. And I need to get there on time. But the driver kept on insisting that you go back and change. The mind was made up that she'll go back and change. Why she was going to change. Uh, uh, she turns on her television. And lo and behold, the building that she was working in. Plane went straight through it. Later on, they interviewed the lady and asked the lady, why didn't you go to work that day? She said, well, I had a nosebleed and the blood got on my blouse and the blood made me turn around. That's all I'm saying for the last 30 years. The blood been covering me. For the last 30 years, the blood has protected me. For the last 30 years. Hey, you are in the sanctuary of the New Jerusalem Missionary Baptist Church, 639 Sanders Lane in the city of Ruville, Mississippi. I am fond of this place. I've been pastoring this place almost nine years. September the 17th of next month, uh, we will we'll be celebrating nine years of pastorship. So I'm grateful of what God has done in this place and what God is doing and what God is going to do. Hey, let's go back into 30 years of preaching and hear from some of my friends. Stay tuned. Pastor Wright, I want to take this opportunity, my friend and my brother, to wish you a happy 30 years in this pastoral ministry. I want to take this opportunity to commend you on how you have kept your hand to the plow. We know for ourselves that we minister and live in a day and time where so many churches are closing, so many people are falling away, but yet you have remained faithful. And that I think I could say for the whole group of us that that has been an encouraging thing to see how you have not dialed back, but have dialed up your commitment uh, to your family, to the church, to the community in which you serve has been an example and has been stellar. And I wanna take this opportunity to continue uh, to encourage you to stay faithful to what God is doing in your life. It is true sometimes that we might not get all that we deserve or might expect in this life, but we do know this for ourselves, that we do serve a God that is faithful and that he will reward us according to our works down here. And I can say for myself, that you've been a tremendous uh, encouragement to me, an uh, inspiration to me, a constant friend. Uh, and I just hope that you continue to grow and continue to be blessed and encouraged in the work that the Lord gives you to do, not just for resting in your laws and what you've done in the past, but to continue to build on what God has you to do and following after what God has called you to do. Thank you, brother, for your labor. Thank you for your service. Thank you for your friendship to you, your entire family, your mom, and the New Jerusalem Missionary Baptist Church. God bless you, and may God continue to keep you in your ministerial endeavors. Pastor Fields. Pastor Wright, congratulations on 30 years of ministry. What an amazing milestone it is. I know that the road wasn't easy, but stay the course and keep the faith. Watch and see the best is yet to come. Oh, praise the Lord, everybody. <laughs> it gives me great pleasure to be able to celebrate 30 years of ministry with Pastor Timothy Wright. What a momentous landmark to be able to reach 30 years of ministry. Pastor Wright, I want to say thank you for being a light, for being an inspiration, for being a prayer warrior, for being an example to so many people. Man, your ministry has touched so many lives. But not only that, I would say thank you for being my friend. It means the world to me. I know that I can call you and I can ask you to pray for me, man, and you're gonna be right there. Pastor Ryan, know that your acts of kindness do not go unnoticed. We appreciate everything that you do. 
I want to tell you to keep going. I want to tell you to keep pushing, keep moving. You were made for this. It looks good on you, okay? You do it so well. God has favored you. Man, and look, I know that you deal with church folks and sometimes dark times will come. Sometimes low moments will come. But know this, Jesus will pick you up if he has to reach way down. Be blessed.
if, if the truth be told, if the truth be told, we often struggle with what we see and what we feel. Can I, can I do that again? Because some of us, uh, uh, we, are, uh, we are not convinced yet, but we struggle, y'all, right. with what we see and what we feel. Right. Because I, I made decision based on how I feel. I made decision based on what I see. But every now and then, what you see might not be what you see. And how you feel might not be related to the word of God. So oftentimes, we act on what we see and how we feel. In other words, can I shout this on good authority? That our faith is often tested. Can, can we be honest with ourselves? Because one thing I have discovered is that God's power is not on display. But our faith is. Uh, uh, let, let me help somebody out. Come here, Abraham. Abraham, uh, God told Abraham uh, to go to a mountain up, up that I would choose for you to go and offer up your son uh, uh, as a sacrifice. Abraham did exactly what God did, told him to do. He goes up to the mountain. But then I like how Abraham does this thing because Abraham simply says this. Hey, as he talks to his entourage, he says, y'all stay here. Me and my boy is going up to worship. Y'all missed that. And, and, and the fact that, that Abraham went up to the mountain that God told him to go with Isaac bound uh, and uh, Abraham getting ready to slay his son, son, here is what happened. The emergency broadcast system came on from heaven. <laughs> and 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 it, the system said, Abraham, do that lad no harm. There's something in the bush. Use him as a sacrifice instead of your instead of the son. And the place that Abraham called that was Jehovah Jireh. The Lord will provide. And I want to talk to some folk in this place when your faith is on trial. Act just like uh, uh, Abraham. That whatever I'm going through, I can't forget to worship alright somebody missing me let me do that again because uh, we allow what we see and how we feel to block our worship and here's what I'm trying to get us to see Lord I know what you're doing I see what's going on I'm still going to worship and we ought to, there ought to be some folks in this building say yes I'm going to lift up my hand even though I'm going through I'm going to lift up my hand even though that I'm in pain I'm going to lift up my hand even though I don't have bills to pay the bill I know who you are if I worship you I will see you as Jehovah Jireh Hey, let's pause for station identification again. You are in the sanctuary of the New Jerusalem Missionary Baptist Church. This is the church I currently pastor as we speak. So God has been good to us again. We're just pausing to let you know how grateful we are to you uh, for all the things you have done. If you have sent a cash app, God bless you. So whatever you're doing, thank you for your support, your prayers. Uh, your financial contributions we are so grateful to you and for you to join us at this time to celebrate 30 years of preaching hey y'all that's a milestone i'm in, i'm indebted to god i'm grateful that god has entrusted me to preach his gospel hey let's go back and hear from some of my friends this is pastor stephen gerard smith of the new bethlehem missionary baptist church in dodgeville mississippi we want to take this moment to congratulate Pastor Wright on 30 years in the ministry. I myself am on my 30th year also, and I understand the struggles and the pains and the persecution, but also understand the perseverance and the strength that God has given you, my brother. So I want to encourage your heart to let you know Paul told Timothy to preach the word, be instant in season and out of season, reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and sound doctrine. Continue to stand on God's word, my brother, and God will continue to bless you. And we pray that God will give you 30 more years in the ministry. And so, brother, keep the faith. Stay steadfast. Stay on the fence. Sound the alarm, my brother. And may God continue to bless you and your ministry immensely. Bless you. It is a honor to congratulate you on pastoring for 30 years. 
Um, I have to just say that I think it's something special. But more than anything, it's a true demonstration of your passion, your calling, your willingness, your meekness, the long suffering that comes with the duties of pastoring. I'm just thinking about a scripture and um, many are called, but a few are chosen. And I think that you have been destined to do this work. Pastor Wright, like, I have to just say that you have been so influential to just me and my life. Um, I'm 31 years old. I have to say that you have been pastoring, that you've been teaching, that you've been educating, that you've been serving, that you've been evangelizing all of my life. And I have learned almost everything spiritually from you. The foundation that I have when it comes to knowing who Jesus Christ is, Lord and Lord, is because of you. And that is something that I am forever grateful for. And so I say congratulations. Um, you've done so many things over the years and we've worked so closely over this past year, um, especially with bringing um, the mental health series out to your church and to the community, um, people in the surrounding communities, whether that's in rural, Cleveland, Greenville, Greenwood, however. And not only do you just try to feed people and educate people spiritually you actually care about their well-being you care about their physical health and their mental health and um living a life in 2023 all those things are equally important you know spiritual health is important physical health um mental health emotional health are all important and how you have went above and beyond to serve your church, your community is a true testament of who you are and your character. So I just say, keep the good fight. And as you would say, stay in the race. Again, congratulations to 30 years. Hello, everybody. Hello, we are the Murphys and we are so excited to celebrate your pastor, Timothy Wright. 30 years in the ministry. 30 years. Wow. You know, Pastor Wright, great friend. Uh, we know that he's a great husband and father. Uh, he and, and Sister Wright have been a great models in our own marriage. Uh, but we just congratulate you all for 30 years in ministry. Yo, I could say several things about Wright. One, the guy can play ball. So he and I played basketball together some years ago. And he talks noise too, y'all. I just want y'all to know he can talk some noise on that court. Uh, but just a great guy. Uh, I, actually, your church is right there in the heart of our school district. And I know that at the, from the time he got to New Jerusalem, he began asking, how can I help the schools? And you all starting you know, the after school program and just so many different things have been helpful to the students right there in Ruleville, which are part of our um, our district. And guess what? The highest rated elementary school and A rated school is right there across the street from your church and you all are helping. So thank you, uh, Reverend Wright. Thank you, my brother. And uh, just best wishes. One thing I can say, you all, when I go visit that school during the week sometimes, and this really stands out to me, his car is there. And y'all know Greenville and Ruleville are not close together, not not that close together. So he's that car is there several days a week. That means I know that he's putting in work for the ministry. So my brother, salute on 30 years. Hey, 30 more in you. You just can't give up now. You just can't give up now. You come too far from where 
you started it from. Nobody told you the road would be easy. We don't believe God's brought you this far to leave you. Stay in the race. Stay in the race. A faith that can't be tested is a faith that can't be trusted. And I think some of you heard me say that before. And, and, and here's the reality. Uh, 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 and often, uh, uh, God uh, puts our faith on display. Not for him to see what we have, but for us to see what we have. But then, too, we often have some misconceptions about faith and how faith works in our lives. C can I help somebody out? Because faith is not our means of manipulating God for our own preferences. But real authentic faith is the hand that accepts uh, what is knowing that God has the power, should he choose to, uh, to alter what is. I mean, watch this. Sometimes God does not move or heal what we have, but that does not change the fact that 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 he is God. And, and if you can fill in the blank, God can still be what you need him to be. Faith is not asking uh, 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 what you will and it shall be given unto you, but rather the Lord gives and the Lord takes away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Our faith is not altered when God does not come through like we want him to, but authentic faith says, I will bless the Lord at all times. That, that's not just happy times, but sad times. That's not just times when we are well, but times when we are sick. That's not just times when we have a few dollars, but uh, 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 when there is no money uh, in the bank, no gas in the tank. Authentic faith says God got it. Faith is not seeking God for your good pleasure. But it is the expression of the prophet Habakkuk when he says, although the fig tree shall not blossom, neither shall fruit be in the vines. The labors of the olive shall fail and the fields shall uh, yield no meat. The flock shall be cut off from the fold and there shall be no sheep in the stalls. This is what the prophet Habakkuk says. All that is going on in my life around me, he says, yet will I rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in the God of my salvation. Let me help somebody out. In other words, my situation does not move me, but my faith moves my situation. Let, can I do that again? Because some of us need to see that, 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 that it's not you who need to be doing the moving. It's your faith to, need to, to move your situation. So my situation does not move me, but my faith moves my situation. Hey, y'all, thank you for joining me to celebrate this wonderful milestone, preaching for 30 years. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy to the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever. Let the church say amen. Good night. Thank you for sharing with me 30 years of preaching. Stay in the race. God bless you. <laughs>